Dogs, my name is Pause Ranger, and today we're going to be looking at the updates of Metro Exodus. Now I have the site and the trailer video we're going to be looking at. Now I did do a video earlier, I did have a planned video of guessing who we could see in Exodus, but um, I kind of scrapped that since the new trailer came out and plus delays. So we have the main page and we have some new things. So first off, we have the world. And look, new mutants, and the whole pre-order. So, let's look at the world first, shall we? So, spring, that's very interesting. So, if I remember rightly, the winter one was the first one we saw, if that's correct. Just let it load for a bit. Yep, winter. Yep, we looked at the page with Hansa and everything. And now, with spring. And notice summer and autumn coming soon. So, step out into the spring. Factions. Factions, many closed commun communities have involved in the wasteland, but few are stranger than the fanatics near the Volga River. Believe in all technology has been man's folly, and only its rejection will bring them salvation. These fanatics, under the watchful eye of their senator, an oddly charismatic leader, Citadel, has been taken worship of the great powerful beast that lurks beneath the water. As uh, so we can see, this is what they look like. And dogs. Quite surprising. Don't you agree? Bandits. When there is no hope for uh, of even returning to normal life, it is no, no surprise that gangs of bandits have sprung up across the wasteland. Furious and malicious. Those that have cultivated the banks of Volk River have seemed to have reached a peace between themselves and have focused their attentions on the terrifying of the locals and robbing them of anything and everything of value. Typical bandit behavior, particularly seen in the Moscow metros. Holy shit, that's an anomaly. Hazards. A buzzing blue ball of electric energy. Anomalies are an ordinary of the post apocalyptic world. And to Extremely dangerous to anything within its certain ra radius. Those strange little home spirit severs can appear in day or night, but tend to follow similar paths every time. So yes, the anomalies in the first game and the second one we didn't really see much of. They just only have a glimpse, but we do know that they're very very powerful and very dangerous if you don't know if i remember right as khan said as long as you stand still and don't move these things won't kill you so if, if the gear exodus follows that rule of law then i think we might be fine but christ um, that guy is definitely dead they've definitely been killed by the anomaly mutants sharpamin it was not only the creatures above the ground that were shaped by the radiation that plagued the surface. No, nah, Sherpum, these mutant aqua aquatic life forms seem to have evolved from some sort of s creatures. And the male of the species will use its huge scale arms as shields and do quite a lot of damage if it takes a sweep at you. While its female sort of split in its covers muscles from a longer distance. Ah, that's referring to the sea creatures from last night. You know the ones with the shields that they use to hands that are completely useless against guns. Unless you have a shotgun, you need to shoot the fuck out of it. Or just use simply an incendiary round. Those things, basically. Human animals, the new mutants in the game. Unlike the name suggests, these are horrifying creatures are anything but human. These bees are not deadly when alone, but tend to travel in packs, so they can be forced to be forced to be reckoned with. They all have also learned to throw heavy projectiles like bricks or stone 
and so are dangerous when nearby or far away. So yeah, these are basically mutated humans. I guess if we're following the line that the dark ones are humans as well, then maybe this is sort of a different branch of the mutation. And we have the a nice map view actually of it. See, we have the crash train, and here is our train. It seems the little camp has been spread out. So obviously, as we know along the story, we'll be attaching more carts to the game. That will be also interesting. And yeah, it actually looks pretty good. I can't wait. I can't wait to get this game. This looks like it's actually ready to be launched, but I rather get them. Let it get it done first. And obviously, there's the bridge that we need to cross, and that's where the fanatics are. So, oh, that that's just pretty epic with this the anomaly there, and how you're just basically fucked if you get anywhere near those damn things. So, if we head back to the game, we're already in six minutes, and reading's been okay. So, news, new journey, the game. This is a new tab, I would presume. Okay, so we have characters, weapons, and mutants. Let's start with characters. Obviously, there will be more characters available. We have Artyom, Anna, and Miller. I originally thought that Miller was just going to stay at Polis to help the Spartan Order with Metro, but look of it not. Coming soon, more characters. Our protagonist, Artyom. <laughs> and, jeez, he looks a bit different. Yeah, Artyom had the Rangers... Oh, it is the Rangers mask, just the front bits just been ripped off. Artyom, our protagonist. We were not born from life in the tunnels. Born in Moscow a few years before the nuclear war, Artyom has lived his entire life in the metro on many... Organized risk of his life to protect it. He is obsessed with the idea of finding life beyond the tunnels of the metro, regularly venturing outside with a radio transmitter, trying to instabilize communications with the outside world. He is determined to prove that there is indeed life outside of Moscow. The second trailer, or it was the first one that you saw, our, we saw our Tjorm go out with a radio. So, it seems that he's very determined to find life, and this is probably the main reason why we're in this situation in the game. That's what we are. We are in. So, Anna, the best sniper of the Spartan Order, and Artyom's wife. How ironic that Miller is her dad. So basically, Artyom, commanding officer, well, Commander Miller is his father, stepfather, I think, was it? No, stepfather was, oh, I can't remember his name now. It would be father-in-law. Yeah, father-in-law, there we go. And obviously Miller, Artyom would be a son-in-law to Miller. So let's have a look at Anna, the best sniper of the Spartan Order. And damn, she actually looks different from Last Light. I want to believe there's a new world out there, Artyom. I want to dream. Miller's daughter and Artyom's wife, Anna is your adversary and will also provide support on missions away from the Aurora, the base of the train will be taken. She is regarded as the best sniper amongst the Spartan Rangers, so you can feel at ease when her watching your back. Anna is known for her interpretive attitude, but she still believes in kindness and compassion and forgiveness, and would have fact for finding a peaceful solution when possible. I just like it that the devs are actually doing this. While we're waiting, we can actually check the site for any new information. Colonel Miller. Miller. Colonel, commander of the Order, and our leader on this journey. So he's the one who's going to be in charge of the mission. Colonel Miller. And Christ, he has changed a bit. Too many lives have already been lost. Have already been sacrificed. Colonel Miller lost his legs in the battle for D6, which is obviously, this is based on the redemption ending of Last Light. 
but this hasn't slowed him down. Equipped with new metal legs, obviously in the trailer you see him with prosthetic legs, and has stubborn and as stubborn as ever. He is the commander of the Aurora, always military figured. He is Reginald and congratulations of often harshest mission success. Wait, often harsh mission success is at the top of Miller's priority list, but he deeply cares for Spartans whom along with Arna he considers his family. And obviously Miller looks at R2 most likely the same way. Because as we know, Miller and Artyom live together. Yeah, Miller has changed in a way. Same for Anna. Still again, Artyom, he again. He's always changed a bit, I guess, clothes-wise. He was in normal civilian clothes in in 2033. And he was in Spartan gear and the hazard stuff from last night. So it is interesting how these characters devolve. Coming soon. Now I am gonna say that I did we know that Ullman's dead, so he won't be with us. So it's confirmed that Miller's joining us, and Artyom and Arna we already know. I hope we get to see Khan. Khan is another important character, because he helped Artyom in his journey, and he did explain about a lot about the natural phenomenon that's been happening in the Metro. So Khan has to return. Um, Pavel is one of them, because as we know, this is the part, a continuation of the redemption ending, so obviously... Pavel would survive in this timeline, this canon timeline. So Pavel will return. And I don't think anyone else we know canon-wise. Maybe Artyom's dad will get to see him, you know, at Metro when Artyom leaves and says goodbye to his father, stepfather. Because, you know, we haven't seen him since 2033. And obviously we know in Last Sight, once the Dark Ones were defeated, Expedition, Artyom's home station, managed to get their shit together. So... Yeah, it's going to be interesting, but Miller, that's very interesting. He's be joining, he'll be joining the, the adventure. Right, weapons. So, it's probably going to list the weapons we well known in the game. So, the Bastard Gun, Shambled Shotgun, Klosha. So, Bastard Gun lives up to the name with every use. The shotgun, when it's shotgun, not a shotgun. A prized possession for any fighter, which is the AK from our site. Which, yet again, the weapons have changed in different ways, which is quite interesting. So, yet again, I am going to go in look in depth because I think it's kind of worth it. So, the bastard gun. You happen to have a length of a thin pipe, a detriment bucket, and rusty anvil, and pillars perfect in a couple of days you might you too might be surprised spraying lead with a bastard gun makes sense really a popular tool for denizing of the moscow metro this gunishman is nightmare gunsmiths there we go gunsmith gunishman gunsmith's nightmare has been turned into a semi-functioning weapon by Troska. Will it still jam? Of course, but the number of bullets can it spit out before it's just enough to drop the most bits? And obviously, this is kind of loading. This is going to be a long video, but I'd rather go in depth with this because I don't really see a lot of YouTubers really talking about this. Looking into the site, they mostly just look at the video. I introduced the site. Because I think it's worth it, because I don't know if anyone really knows the, the site. They probably do, but not a lot of people do a video about it. So, obviously enough, though, we have a little bastard gun here. Yet again, just like the previous games, it has been... Uh, I don't know if it's really doing it right, anyway. It has been through sniffing changes, and by the look of it, and oh, wow... Yeah, it has been changed a lot. Just look at this beautiful bastard. So yes, the bastard gun has actually completely changed. So I'll give the devs credit, actually. When credit is due, they have completely done well with this. 
Okay, the Shamble Shotgun, obviously there's more weapons, but these are basically the main weapons of the game that we know. Obviously there's even more. A Shamble Shotgun has taken the humble shotgun and turned it into something else. Something terrifying and deadly to anyone on the receiving end. Sacrificing reloadability, simply even common sense for sheer firepower, the Shamble requires consistent attention and turning. Its terrifying effect on enemy can only be described as cross between a meat grinder and a law mower. Practically, this is the go-to shotgun in Metro. Literally, I use this all the time. It's that good. You can't deny that this is the best shotgun in the game. I'm not going to show them all because you can see it right there. And obviously, the Kalash. Yet again, a common, decent, good machine gun. One of the few pre-war weapons still wide collection, a Klasha has been used in conflicts all over the world, renowned for its unpolished reliability and firepower in combat. A standard Klasha is already a sold assault rifle, but thanks to Trogothob, the Spartan version can automatically have a huge variety of upgrades, support everything from extended magazines to custom sites, this weapon can also be transformed into a variety of fins, including a machine gun and an LMG. Well then. Yet again, free weapons, the bastard gun I think people only use for a bit and they just get rid of it and just go for the basic weapons. But now we're going to be taking extra care. Now the mutants. Now we've already showcased, it's talked about the water ones, but let's have a look. So, Watchmen's, Humanoids, Christ, the demons look different, like, ugh. Let's, let's get on with the Watchmen. Watchmen, pack hunters of the Russian race land. Yet again, the Ro Watchmen have a completely rechanged in the game, they're completely different, which is a good thing, because they look more terrifying. I think this Exodus Watchmen look better than 2033, the original. Why the why the last what last light ones are better than 2033, but these Watchmen, they just wipe the floor with just how bad, how scary, and badass they look. With predicting joints, foursome claws, and yowling teeth, the Watchmen is one of the most common creatures in the post-apocalyptic Russia, which is true. Running in packs, these savage mutants strike it, stalk every street and tunnel. A long, a lone watchman is no match for a trained spawn, but these, but their sentries can quickly summon reinforcements if not dealt with quickly and quietly. Which is true. The watchmen are quite deadly. I never really had a trouble with them in the game. They were quite easy to kill, really. You get it even on spawn difficulty. I've got a humanoid class, Demon. As it says, Apex Predator of the food chain. Oh my god. Okay. I can definitely say the demons are definitely human, mutated humans. Maybe bats. Demon, the Apex Predator of the food chain. The demon is a huge winged beast, is well known to Metro residents as one of the deadliest creatures around. Like the Grostoku bird of prey, this creature hunts alone, and thanks to its strength, it can easily grip prey of any size from the ground. It is often best to stay clear of these completely when seen, pick up your pick your path carefully, and remain under cover to avoid being picked up. That's true, the demons, they tend to attack people in the surface in open areas, so usually as us, the player, Yet again, we don't really run a lot into the demons, but if we're going for this, for Exodus, with the whole open world thing, yeah, these things are going to be annoying. But to summary, they look, yet again, more terrifying than Last Light. The Last Light demon looks freaking bulky, it looks like it's a bill, it looked like it could pick up any mutant and kill it. Now, as it said, it's an apex predator, so obviously, the demon would eat any mutants, and I mean Nosalysis, Watchmen, Liberians, maybe the bear? 
bear mutant because yes they the guess the bear mutants in the game as well from the first try maybe the bear probably the cubs and some of the fish creatures and humans obviously in the human animals but this one I'm guessing that this is more of a wasteland type of demon rather than the metro one because I don't know if the metro demons from our site are the residents of the cities they're big and bulky because they have to because there's mutants everywhere and they need to be prepared for any fight and these ones these demons i would presume would be sort of a countryside demons which would make sense if we're going in that type of logic then these are countryside demons and the ones from last night are the city ones it would make an interesting theory though but christ they look terrifying as all hell and, oh yeah, the human animals have picked the wrong one. This is going to be a long video, but you know what? It's worth it reads as it explore on these. So, yet again, three main characters, three weapons, and three mutants. Human animals. Nightmarish creatures discovered from descendants from humans. Which is true, they're basically humans mutated because of the radiation. And hello, Boogie. Love that guy. At first glance, the resemblance of... The look and shape of a human. Get closer, however, and you'll find a dangerous, aggressive creature that attacks on sight. Usually found in groups, they often inhabit at dark locations and discarded buildings. Their behavior is similar to that of an ape, that of apes, and they often use nearby debris as, project, as prim primitive weapons. Keep your distance and take them down quietly, quickly, to avoid being overwhelmed. They're probably going to be the easiest to kill, but when there's lots of them, I think they're going to be ha a major pain to deal with. So, like I said, there's only we have the three main characters, three weapons, and now the three mutants. One new mutant, as we can shown here, and two normal mutants that we know completely rechanged. Now, what mutants do we can we see return? We know the Watchmen are returning, they're turning. we know the Demons are returning. The Human Animals are the new mutants. The Bears are returning, so we know the Bear from Last Light is going to be coming back to us. Um, Nosalysis. The Nosalysis are an interesting mutant, yet again, they are another common mutant in Russia. But they were only in underground civilities, basically the metro itself and caverns and tunnels. So, maybe we won't see them a lot. I highly, I doubt we might see them. But they are a common mutant in the game. So they will probably will be in the game. But, what they'll look like, I don't know. We might see the Big Mama. If you do not know, the Big Mama is basically the alpha female, I would guess, of the Nosalysis. And obviously the winged Nosalysis, which are also female, would be lesser female Nosalysis and will probably protect the alpha female and I'll see the big bruise ones or I'll see the male Nosalysis. That would be also interesting to see if they will be in the game as well. They probably will be. Um, we know the sea creatures will probably return the big brutish ones. Maybe the shrimp creatures we might be able to see return as well. Ah, the spider bugs. That's going to be interesting. The spider bugs were only really in the game, particularly last night, and maybe 2033 if we're going Redux route. They were only in underground and never in the surface, obviously in dark places. Obviously, one of the expansion packs of last night was a, another secret bunker, but it was infested with those spider things. So we will probably see them very unlikely. Maybe in some odd spot areas we might see them. But I don't really see them really popping up a lot. And... Ah. This is going to be both mutants and main character. The Dark Ones. The Dark Ones are another major characters in the game. And, the mute, and they are mutants. That's... Yes, I remember. Last Lane Redemption and Lord Dark One said he hopes to see Artyom again when he's all grown up. Maybe we get to see the little dark one all grown up, maybe in mid of the year of the game, or maybe later in the game. 
Probably the same thing with Khan. We might see him early or mid in the game. But the little dark ones are another mutants to see. And I'll see... I, I know this is current count, but... We're probably going to see the anomalies return to the game. Because they... Yet again, obviously we know they're going to return because I just showed it earlier in a couple of minutes ago that the anomalies will be showing up. Um, supernatural tunnels. If you remember in Last Sight and 23 Archon went in some tunnels and they had supernatural phenomena. Obviously there was the one with that massive graveyard of you and Bourbon went through and there's a shit ton of bodies. We might see that type of r runes. And maybe tunnels that will repeat their past, like yet again, one from 2033 and Last Light. And maybe a few stations here and there. So these are just guesses and theories, but it is going to be interesting. So, okay, on second thought, watch it yourself, because it doesn't like me recording, it just wags buffers like crazy. But... What do you guys think? Are you looking forward to Metro Exodus? Also, I'll be doing more videos on the game. Once it comes out or is available to pre-order, I will be pre-ordering it. And hopefully I will release videos soon to it. Because this game, I just love Metro. Obviously, it was supposed to come out August, but they delayed it to next year, February 22nd. Which obviously it will be available to pre-order soon. So... Once it becomes available on Steam, if you are a Metro fan, I recommend getting this game. But any case though, I recommend checking the site out, particularly the Metro Exodus one, for any further changes. Obviously, we have more main characters coming on the way, more mutants, more guns, and obviously we have the Summer and Autumn page to look forward to. And some new characters and NPCs, like dogs. That is very interesting. But with that said... Thank you for watching. <laughs>